Welcome to our Broad Street Ministry virtual worship service. My name is Reverend Laura Coley and I serve as the pastor here at BSM. We are celebrating the first Sunday of Advent, which is a season of waiting and preparation, the beginning of a new church calendar when new possibilities are being birthed into the world. With all of the difficulties and challenges of this past year during Advent, we will be exploring what it looks like to have hope peace, joy, and love against all odds, daring to find and cultivate goodness despite everything we've experienced this past year. We want to thank you so much for joining with us this week. We don't have membership here in our faith community, but instead believe whoever shows up on any given Sunday is the church for that day. So we want to thank you for being the church here with us on this first Sunday of Advent. 
Let me give you a little orientation to our worship service so you might know what to expect. You can find a number of helpful links below the YouTube live stream that may help you get to some places you need to go. First of all, there's a link to the online bulletin where you can follow along with all the readings and music for today. You can find a link to where, where you can make a financial offering on our donation page. You can find a link to where you can submit your online prayers and introduce yourself to the community. And you can also find a link to our 2021 commitment card if you'd like to consider how you might commit yourself to this faith community in the next year. We want to invite you to find some kind of communion elements so that you may join us in the sacred practice that we celebrate every Sunday. Any kind of bread or cracker, anything you can find in your house and some kind of juice will be absolutely perfect. And as we transition into this time of worship, I want to invite you to reflect on our worship question of the day, which is, what does hope feel like to you? What does hope feel feel like to you. For me, hope feels like this small burning flame that gets me up in the morning and keeps me moving despite everything in the world. What does hope feel like to you? At this time, our pastoral intern Rachel Johnson will lead us in acknowledging God's presence wherever you are and whatever you may be doing. Come, let us worship God. Broad Street. My name is Rachel Johnson. I am one of your pastoral interns this year, and I am here to invite you to join us in acknowledging God's presence. So take a deep breath and center yourself wherever you are, however you feel, and be at peace as we hear this Advent blessing titled The Blessing of Hope by Jan Richardson. So may we know the hope that is not just for someday, but for this day, here, now, in this moment that opens to us. Hope not made of wishes, but of substance. Hope made of sinew and muscle and bone. Hope that has breath and a beating heart. Hope that will not keep quiet and be polite. Hope that knows how to holler when it is what is called for. Hope that knows how to sing when there seems like little cause. Hope that raises us from the dead. Not someday, but this day. Every day, again and again and again. No matter who you are or where you come from or your state of mind or where you are, you are invited into this holy space. We wouldn't be us without each and every one of you. And God is already waiting for us to gather and worship. So come bring yourself your whole self with your faith and your doubts alike, and you will be met by a caring community and by the living God. Let's worship God together. Amen. To mark the beginning of the Advent season, we will be singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, today performed by Tyler Bellinger and Greg Moore. Then after that, Emma, Emma Claire Martin will read one of our lectionary scripture passages for today from Matthew chapter 24. And then before the sermon, we will be doing a version of the classic Advent wreath lighting liturgy by inviting some of the families in our communities to reflect on these ideas of hope, peace, joy, and love, what they mean to them. Today, uh, the Wynn family will be sharing their thoughts on the idea of hope and then leading us in a candle lighting prayer. If you have an Advent candle, uh, an Advent wreath, you're welcome to come and join us in this practice now. Oh, come, 
from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 26 to 44. So if anyone tells you, there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms, don't believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only God. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a handmill, one will be taken and the other 
left. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come, but understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. The word of God for the people of God. Hi, Broad Street. Um, we're the Wynn family. I'm Katie. I'm Pete. I'm Nari. I'm Miriam. And we're going to talk to you a little bit today about hope and what hope means to us. For me, I think hope is really believing that what is right, that what is just, will come to pass. And when I think about what hope feels like, I think about the sunrise in the morning and the idea and feeling of a new, a new start and that every day we can be renewed to start again. Uh, hope for me is um, you know, a thought, a promise, or a truth really that gives me strength uh, to really get through the day or that gives me encouragement, uh, sometimes a lightness of heart. Hope for me is when there's a feeling or a thought that something is gonna, good is going to happen or something is going to be solved. Hope for me. And what do you think we're hoping for in 2021? Um, I think um, I'm hoping for just a healing, you know, as a community, as a country. Um, there's so much divide right now, and just inner healing too, um, you know, personally. I hope we we'll get a new start for 2020. Um, I hope that we, the corona ends so we don't have to worry. Don't worry about us anymore. That's my hope too. And I think, um, I just hope that we have had growth in this past year, that where we start out in 2021 isn't um, 2019, but a new place. Um, that there's healing and growth that's happened that will change us personally, but also change the systems and the things that we're a part of in our country. Hope cannot be imposed from on high. Hope cannot be commanded. Hope of God is courageous, risky, and unfold. The hope of God is collective, liberating us from deadly complacency. Hope invites our expectation and demands our participation. I hope we birthed among us within and this Advent. Happy, Happy Advent, Advent and Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas Brushy. I have a little disclaimer for today, and that's that this sermon may sound a little familiar to some of you. And that's because I preached a version of it last Advent when we were considering how Advent is an apocalyptic season, when God breaks into human history and transforms the structures of the world. This year has been more apocalyptic than any of us could have imagined. And while looking over my sermons from last year, I came across this one, and it spoke some real truth to me. And I sense that it may speak some real truth to you as well. So here we are again, exploring how we can have hope against all odds this Advent season. Let us pray. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God of Rob, Jennifer, and Mark, Kirsten, Miriam, and Nori, break into our world, O oh God, and comfort us with your truth. We ask this Advent season that you show us what your hope looks like so that we might be able to show it to others. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O oh God, 
who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So happy first Sunday in Advent. We made it kicking and screaming into this new church calendar year. We made it. And I will admit to you that when the season of Advent comes around, I am not exactly sure what to do with it. I'm not sure how to act or how to feel or what we as a faith community are supposed to be doing during this season. Sure, I look forward to all of the festive traditions every December, like picking out a Christmas tree and decorating the house, making holiday goodies, and celebrating the Christmas Eve candlelight service, even though we'll be celebrating it virtually this year. But I'm also keenly aware of how difficult this season can be for so many people, especially this year, maybe more than any others. I'm aware of how hard it can be to celebrate the holidays after the passing of a loved one, or like this year, the passing of several loved ones, or having to celebrate from a distance from our friends and family. I'm aware of how the joy and the excitement of this season can feel like a smack in the face for so many of us who are hurting and lonely and scared right now. Advent to me feels like a delicate balance between the joyful celebration on the one hand and making room for those of us who do not feel like celebrating on the other. I'm really much more comfortable with Lent, if I'm honest. Give me brooding self-reflection on the state of human mortality over festive merrymaking any day of the week. But my love of Lent has reminded me that there has to be a purpose to this time of year. There has to be a reason why we keep coming back to it year after year. Just as Lent serves as an opportunity to take stock of our lives and of our relationships once a year, Advent has to provide us with some kind of reorienting message that we return to year after year. A message that is grounding enough for me to use an old sermon. And I think our scripture passage for today gives us some clue as to what that reorienting message might be. At first glance, Matthew 25, verses 36 through 44, does not seem like a particularly adventy message. It's missing the angels, the shepherds, the wandering magi, the Emmanuel prophecies, and the fluffy barn animals that we've come to expect this season. Instead, we find a passage wholly concerned with the end of time, depicting the highly anticipated return of the Son of Man to Earth. And while you may not often hear a sermon on this passage during Advent, Matthew 24 is certainly included in the Advent lectionary along with many other distinctly apocalyptic passages. Seriously, they're all eschatological. These end of time passages show us how Advent is an inherently apocalyptic time when God breaks into human history and flips the systems of the world on their head. And when God places us within a much larger narrative, the word apocalyptic quite literally means to uncover in Greek. And so these passages are also asking us to uncover and reveal some truths that are already present in our current reality. Jesus offers this apocalyptic insight found in Matthew 24 after his disciples remark on the impressiveness of the temple buildings in Jerusalem. Now, this narrow focus frustrates Jesus and leads him to tell them about the temple's upcoming destruction and about what will happen when Jesus returns to earth for a second time. Jesus' words in this chapter are meant to give the disciples perspective on their current reality and to uncover what is truly important in the here and now. Not the grandeur of the temporary structures, but instead God's redemptive work in the world. That's what's important. These words are also meant to give the disciples hope that the current corruption and evil will not last forever. Admittedly, we know that these passages like this one 
that are related to the second coming have often been used as a way of scaring the masses into to behaving a certain way. And these second coming passages have also been used to justify Christian indifference to the present atrocities, saying no worries about the war or the famine or any kind of suffering right now because Jesus will return one day and make it all better. But if we read closely, Matthew 24 is not encouraging any kind of fear mongering or any kind of spiritual escapism. Instead, this passage is offering good news to the people wherever they are in their current, present, concrete realities. The passage says that no one knows when this supposed second coming will take place. Not even Jesus knows. There's no secret knowledge that only the spiritual elites will be able to obtain. We are not being called to withdraw to a secluded mountaintop and to spend our days in prayer trying to calculate when the Son of Man will return. No, instead the passage tells us that God shows up to women and men and people everywhere in the midst of their daily lives doing daily tasks and activities in fields and houses, in rest and at work. That's where God shows up. God shows up and receives, which in my opinion is a better translation than takes. God shows up and receives those who remain expectant of God's arrival, those who are actively waiting for Jesus' return. God receives those who are present to their immediate experience, but are not so mired in it that they cannot see God's larger work in motion. This passage is good news to us because it assures us that our current realities, our current pains here in 2020, they matter. All that we've experienced this past year matters and means something to our overall human existence. And it's also good news because it assures us that our story is much bigger than the present moment. It's good news because it assures us that God is not done with us yet. In this way, Matthew 24 invites us to have one eye on what is going to come, to trust that something decisive is going to happen in the future but to all the while keep our attention focused on the present day and the needs of the current hour. These apocalyptic passages ask us to zoom out from our present view and to see the larger picture of God's redemptive work in the world throughout all of time. We're asked to know this of how God broke into human history in the days of Noah and Abraham, David, and Jesus. We are to pay attention to how God continues to reveal and unfold God's self in our modern day. And we are to witness how God will one day show up again at the end of all things. God's story is big much, much bigger than the present moment. And it is only when we stand in this big, big story with one hand reaching back to the promises of the past and one hand reaching forward to the expectant fulfillment of those promises that we can stand firmly in the present reality and not have that reality consume us. This Advent, I need our story to be bigger than 2020. I need our story to be more than our current reality. I need to be reminded of the times that God has bust down the doors of human history and flipped the systems of the world on their head. I need to be told that this is not all that there is, that this isn't how our story ends. With COVID-19 ravaging our country, particularly our communities of color. With Americans putting their personal liberties over the very livelihood of their neighbors. 
with the American government losing the parents of 545 immigrant children locked in cages in our border, with white supremacist organizations being emboldened by our political leaders and posting the bail of domestic terrorists, with the regular murder of our trans community members, with wildfires obliterating our forests and poisoning our airs, with hotels and dormitories and an entire defunct hospital in Center City laying empty while hundreds of our Philadelphian neighbors remain unhoused during a global pandemic. I welcome an apocalyptic end to these present atrocities. I need this bigotry and sexism and transphobia and classism and violence and other selfishness to be uncovered and named for what they truly are. I need God to show up in the here and now, and I need to believe there is more than just this. That's the point of Advent. This Advent season invites us into an apocalyptic kind of hope. This is not a naive pie in the sky, everything will work out in the end kind of hope. This is not a nihilist escapism kind of hope either. This is a hope against all odds of the terribleness that consumes our current reality. It's the hope of a people who have heard the dangerous rumor that God has shown up in human history and refuses to leave us alone. It's an active, maybe even a forceful kind of hope where we hold God's proverbial feet to the fire saying, you promised God, you, you promised you will be with us. And now we are going to unapologetically claim that promise as our own. So let's do this. Let's make your world better as you promised it would be. Let's do this together. That's the kind of hope. And I know there are plenty of us who are tired of holding out hope for a different reality who would want nothing more than to find an escape from the nightmare that is 2020. We are tired of our exhaustion, our uncertainty, our heartache, our grief, our depression, our loneliness, our sense of hopelessness. I think that perhaps this Advent and yes, maybe every Advent, we are being invited to simultaneously honor these feelings while also expanding our present perspective. The apocalyptic nature of this Advent season reorients our view of human history, reminding us that this reality is not all there is, nor all there will be. Just as the season of Lent invites us to pause and take stock of our lives, this Advent season invites us to pause and admire the vastness of God's story, finding hope in the bigness of it all. Now, this is a reorienting message I can get behind, something I can return to year after year, every Advent. It's a reorienting message that challenges me to get my hope up, even once a year. Not because this is a season of merriment and cheer. No, Advent is an inherently hopeful time because it opens us up to the fullness of God's time. It's a hopeful time because it boldly reminds us that God is not done with us yet. And it's a hopeful time because it's when we await the arrival of a God who is already here with us. Thanks be to the God who was and is and who forever will be. Amen. I have decided, I have resolved to wait upon you, Lord. My rock and redeemer, shield. 
than reward I'll wait upon you, Lord As surely as the sun will rise You'll come to us Certain as the dawn appears You'll come Let your glory fall as you respond hearts again. You'll come, you'll come. We are not shaken, we are not moved, we wait. At the end of this calendar year and the beginning of a new church calendar year, I'm aware of how many of us are just in survival mode. We're doing everything we can to just make it through the day, through the week, through the month, through the year. But I want us to recognize that these small acts of survival can also be small acts of hope as well. Applying for a job is an act of hope. Cleaning your clothes is an act of hope too. Calling a friend and paying a bill, completing a homework assignment, getting some task done at work, even doing something as simple as eating a meal and feeding yourself so that you have strength to keep going, those are all acts of hope. So I wanna invite you to come to this table daring to be fed and to be made strong for this day and for many more days to come. Come and dare to be hopeful in a world that is brighter and better. Come. The Lord be with you.
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Please pray with me. Our sweet heavenly friend, help us to hear you saying, I am your hope over all the other voices. Your word says you are the hope for the hopeless. And so God, we are running to you with both hands stretched out and grabbing onto you. Fill us with hope and give us a tangible reminder today that hope is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline. God, you know those things in our hearts that we barely dare to hope for. Today, we give them to you. We trust them to you. We know that you can do more than we could ever guess, imagine, or request in our wildest dreams. Our holy confidant and father, please look upon all your people who struggle with anger, anxiety, doubt, frustration, guilt, hopelessness, loss, memories, lack of patience, pain, regret, sadness, selfishness, temptation, and weakness. Help us believe that you make all these things work for your good purpose in our lives, even when we do not understand. Remind us of your invitation to cast all of our cares upon you and of your, of your assurance that you care for each one of those as uniquely as you care for each one of us. Help us each to be a shining symbol of your hope for a world that needs it more than ever. Fill us with the knowledge needed to be the right person at the right time for the right person in need. Lend us your healing grace to care for others, especially for Andrew, Linda, William, Nancy, Janet, Steve, Case, Beth, Tom, Todd, Dee, Aaliyah, Maurice, the Strickers, Harold, Julie, Krista, Matt, Shanae, and all of the BSM staff, congregants, guests, and board. Come to us in this moment, God. Hear the intentions kept deep within our hearts. Inspire us to anchor the pain and fear of our very souls to the hope that comes in you alone. Hear our cries as we offer the prayer taught to us by your son, Jesus, saying, Our Mother, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night Jesus was arrested, he gathered with his closest friends in the world for a humble meal as an act of hope, knowing that his community and his legacy would live beyond the next couple of days. At the end of the meal, he took bread, he blessed it and he broke it saying, this is my body friends, broken for you. Every time you do this, remember me. In the same way, he took the cup, he blessed it and he poured it out saying, this is my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of every sin. For every time you do this, remember me. For every time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we dare to hope in a better day until the revolution comes, 
when Jesus will come to wipe away every tear and death and mourning and pain and illness will be no more. Friends, you're invited at this time to tear off a piece of your bread as large as you understand God's grace for you to be, which means take a lot, <laughs> to dip it into the cup and to eat, knowing that this is the body of Christ broken for you and this is the blood of Christ poured out for you. Friends, everything has been made ready at this Advent table. The only thing that is missing is you. So come. We have a couple of announcements for you this afternoon. First of all, we have uh, two different Advent resources for you. First, an Advent devotional, which comes from Illustrated Ministry called Light and Darkness. Um, it's made for adults and children, families of all ages. We have an electronic version that we can send to you or we can print out a version for you if you'd like. We also have a BSM Advent calendar filled with ideas for every day of this sacred season of Advent as a way to make this part of year special and holy and filled with joy for you and everyone in your household. The next announcement is that we will be gathering on Zoom the Thursdays of Advent starting this Thursday, December 3rd at 6 p.m. to sing carols and tell Christmas stories and to lift a glass to the new year. For these carol and cheers gatherings, you are welcome to bring whatever beverage that you please and you can find a Zoom link included in your bulletin. Please come and join us. We'll have a great time here this Thursday evening. And then finally, you are invited to join us for our virtual coffee hour through Zoom right after worship at 5 p.m. today, Sunday afternoon. There's a link included at the bottom of the live stream. This is an opportunity for you to pop in, discuss the service, and generally check in with one another. 
Before we close things out here this afternoon, we want to take a moment uh, to remember that we all have something to offer. We all have an opportunity to uh, make true the promises that we've made and recognize that we all have something to bring. At Broad Street, there are many ways that you can offer of yourself. One way you can offer of yourself is by sharing your prayers, the things dearest to your heart. You can do that by filling out the Google prayer form below or by emailing me direct directly at lauraC at broadstreetministry.org. And you can be assured that there will be people praying for you and the situations in your life. You can also offer of yourself by filling out that same prayer form and introducing yourself to us, telling us who you are and how you'd like to maybe be more involved with this faith community. You can offer of yourself by giving your money, by sharing the resources that you have, recognizing that we live in a world that tells us to hold on tightly to what is ours, but that there is strength and hope and power and letting go and recognizing that we are connected with one another and live with one another. You can also offer of yourself by filling out the commitments, uh, the commitment form card below, which is telling us how you'd like to commit to this community in 2021. Friends, however you'd like to offer of yourself, your tithes and offerings will now be received. The good news of this day is that our story is bigger than the present moment. So as we strive to honor the feelings of this day without being mired in them, I charge you to go out into this week and be of good courage. Hold fast unto all that is good and render unto no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, and honor everyone even as you love and serve the Lord. May the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. The wonderful Pamela Gwaltney will share with us how we can pass the peace with one another. And since we're in a hopeful mood, we are going to close things out with the Beatles. Here comes the sun performed by Matthew Kepler. Friends, it was wonderful to worship with you this Advent Sunday. We will see you again for Advent Part 2. Hello, dear Broad Street friends. This is the time in the service where we um, wish each other peace. Um, in Proverbs 1430, the Bible says, a heart at peace gives life to the body. And in John 1427, Jesus says, my peace I leave with you. And Jesus's peace is not like the peace of the world. It's not something that's given to us and then snatched away or a promise unkept. Uh, it is peace that abides with us, that's in our heart, uh, that guides us and uh, takes us where we want to go. Uh, it's a peace that's ever present. And now is the time for you to wish each other peace. Uh, wish peace to the people that are with you in your home. Uh, you can drop a message of peace in the chat. Uh, you can text or call someone and wish them peace. Peace be with you. Darling